Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Psycho Goldfish and Will Comer. So welcome everybody to the New Grounds Podcast. We're here. I am Will Kamar. We got Psycho Goldfish with me. Yo. And a very special guest today, Newgrounds extraordinaire, sound designer extraordinaire, Rucklow. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Nice to be here. I'm excited to be here because you guys know each other and have worked in person together, so I am going to have fun listening to you guys talk about the things you know of each other. Now I'm going to sit here and kind of like eat popcorn and uh, be color commentary and talk along the way. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, Rucklow, most of you guys know Rucklow um, through Newgrounds. He's got a pretty extensive catalog of audio on the audio portal. He's uh, everybody's favorite mod who types like a four-year-old. No, I don't. It's all you guys that type that <laughs> shit. I'm the progressive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We've known each other for quite a long time now. God, I can't even remember like, when we first met. It had to be like 2006, 2005. Yeah. Physically or online? Uh, online. That would be, yeah, around there somewhere. Physically, I think it's yeah, 2008. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing you across the street oh. and you gave me a big hug after I managed to cross the street uh, and surviving that. <laughs> that was... Yeah, so the story uh, of how Victor and I met in person the first time kind of ties into the fact that his whole career in uh, audio design, he owes it to me. Okay. So... <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Strong we, words. We, uh, we, um, I really wanted to like meet him to begin with. Like I said, we've known each other online for years. Uh, so I convinced Tom to get him a ticket to fly out to the Pico Day in 2008, 2009, whatever the hell year it was. And yeah, like he said, like we're all walking down the street and he's uh, he sees me and we just run up. We hugged. It was a beautiful moment. Aww. But uh, yeah, we did a whole bunch of fun shit. Typical Pico Day. We'll get into some of those stories because they're hilarious. But the long story short, it was the flight home where you uh, ended up sitting beside that Dice executive, right? Uh, no, it was the, on the flight to Chicago where I had transfer. Oh, okay. So it was even on the way there. Yeah. yeah. So he ended up on the plane and sat beside this freaking executive that works for Dice. And one thing led to another. And why don't you tell us how that went? Uh, it wasn't an executive. It was an art guy. Uh, and he was working there. And it turned out that we're actually from the same county in Sweden as well. So I don't think we had any mutual friends by, uh, by then. But we spent all those hours just talking about games. And uh, by then, I was about to do my final thesis for uh, my uh, uh, audio degree thingy. And I was looking into making some kind of, I don't know, uh, just sound bank or something like that. But he kind of got me into the whole idea of, uh, well, let's look what the check out what the games industry is all about nowadays. So, well, he I was he was supposed to be my contact and my way in, but he really wasn't. I, I made a, a suggestion, uh, which I wanted to get some feedback from him and get some contact info and whatnot, but he never responded. <laughs> so I did it on my own and actually kind of managed to get that internship at Dice on my own. But it was I would never have thought about it if I hadn't gone to. Uh, been flown out by you guys and uh, yeah so that's how that happened so his his career oh, was career to me yeah 100 percent. wait so that's <laughs> wild so you met the guy on the plane first talked about it with him and he kind of put the bug in your head of doing it but then he wasn't part of the process of you getting in <laughs> yeah exactly that's wild cycle that kind of invalidates your whole thing he didn't get in because of you he got in because he did an internship like a normal person yeah no 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 the bug was planted because of me yeah and uh, therefore see yeah, see yeah, no, no, no. I, I i take full credit full credit you should <laughs> it wasn't just the bug i mean it was also well yeah i guess the bug in a, in a sense well, and, and see, he was on his way to see me, so his mind was already open to the idea of falling in love with something. So he fell in love with the idea. So there. Well, I think we can really <laughs> we can really chalk it up to the plane that flew you guys there was really the real thing that got you into it. So let's all worship the plane instead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's the love plane. So yeah, you you ended up interning at Dice. Um, you worked on what, like fucking. 30 battlefield games yeah something like that wow yeah you want to talk want to talk about what you did on those games a little bit and 
Yeah, well, uh, first thing, uh, I did my internship, and that was uh, for an unannounced project that never happened. So I actually did proper sound design there for a couple of months, uh, along with my final thesis, which was kind of shit, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> then I was hired uh, on a contract for three months to help uh, uh, finalizing Battlefield 3, and I was working with voices at that point. Uh, and then after that, I was hired another three months to do some uh, uh, documentation for Frostbite, uh, the audio part there, the engine. And then I was hired full time as a video designer and did voices, basically. Not myself, but uh, producing voices, which, um, yeah, what the hell is that all yeah, about? Yeah, what is producing voices specifically? Because I saw that on your credits, and I was wondering if you were the one helping on the other side of the microphone, or if you're doing some post work, or what's going on with your sound producing. You're doing a whole lot of shit, basically. So we actually broke that down at some point, just to compare a regular sound designer to a voiceover designer to see what kinds of... Uh, like what, what what's your um, areas of expertise basically and we counted up to like five or six areas for a sound designer uh, that they needed to be competent uh, in and for a voiceover design it would be like 12 13 or something oh so God. basically it starts out with well uh, the game there's a game idea uh, there's pre-production and whatnot and you might be part of that just doing some temp voices and shit just to uh, and help enhance whatever ideas that the um, the, the smart and creative people uh, come yeah. up with. And then, as a voice designer, I would be part of the uh, um, the sound crew, basically. Well, I, I guess you could say one one foot into the sound department, and one foot into the narrative part. Uh, but belonging to the sound department at least it dies. I mean, other studios might do it, but that's how it was. Over there. The, narr um, the narrative department because you're also working with the writers you mean yeah exactly so basically it's um i mean i would help out trying to structure scripts uh i would browse through scripts i would work together with writers to make sure that they're doing what we want them to do basically uh or, or write rather sometimes i would write some small passages myself i would help record stuff in terms of uh, both supervising uh, with a proper director and an actor and whatnot, and also sometimes directing myself, I I was I made sure to work with directors that wasn't like hard ass on I'm the director you do what I tell you to, <laughs> yeah, but rather we're not at the sure Oscars, that. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, so we're not at the Oscars here. We're not trying to get like Academy performances. Uh, anyway, yeah. So what have you been? Yeah, what have you been doing since your? Uh... Work with dice. Um, I so I left summer 2018, and uh, I met a girl, and I moved down down south to uh, the southern part of Sweden, and I started to study, and now I study meteorology. Meteorology. That's why meteorology. you're going to be a weather man. Probably a background person. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm I'm pretty old. It's kind of hard to start studying when you're 37 or whatever I was. Uh, so we'll see if I even manage to fi finalize this well, shit. I got some re-exams coming up. Or not, so. That's a very cool thing, though. What made you want to get into the meteorology side? 2018 was a super hot summer in Sweden. And um, I was really just looking into... I was actually going to go on a break, like study some math, have time online, and go surf somewhere. But I met my girlfriend, so uh, I just kind of figured that oh, I'll go and see if I can start study something. Physics has always been something that I've been interested in. So I applied for, well, I, I couldn't apply because I was too late to, to submit some applications. Mm -hmm. But I called them and they told me at the school that there was some uh, spots available for the meteorology program. And the first year and a half was basically the same thing as everyone uh, studying any branch of physics would study. So I figured that I'll, I'll go there and do that for a year and a half and we'll see if I want to switch uh, later on to astronomy or whatever um, because there would probably be people dropping out and whatnot so there should be some spots available yeah. but the, this is a three years education and after that you actually have a profession that you can work with straight afterwards so uh, and yeah it's students low and whatnot kind of yeah 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 that's so stuff. you felt like at that point you were you had a girl you were you were wanting to like 
get a bigger career skill kind of thing? Um, yeah. Um, I was just tired of the games industry, I suppose. Mm. I mean, it's, it's also, it's not just being tired of it. I, I was burnt out. So, so I got burnt out, and that's part of why I left. Uh, okay. I was kind of getting tired of it in, in beforehand, but I didn't really see myself leaving. But then I got burnt out, so I, I, I was away for like two months, and then I started working half time for a month or two, and then 75%, just more and more. And Are we talking about like the games industry we've all been seeing lately about how much of a crunch it is and how badly like the hours can get and all that? Yes. And that's yeah. something, it's not a, it's definitely not a nice problem. It's a, it's a problem that you would get everywhere, I think, in the industry. In the industry. Yeah. So the, uh, I mean, I would say, for what I've heard from uh, a lot of people working in other uh, companies and other studios, Dice is actually quite good, and I would definitely, yeah. for working there, it's uh, yeah, there, there there's a lot of good benefits, and they're trying to be aware of, of you know when it comes to both physical and mental health for their employees and, and all that stuff. But for some reason, it's still in the games industry. And when she hits the fan, you're still going to have to go walk that extra mile. And yeah. I I guess it's it kind of comes down to what type of personality you are as well. And I'm the kind of person that, you know, I can do it. I can go and then forever. You can't. And then, <laughs> yeah, that's not always the case. Yeah, you can go on forever until you well, I gotta stop. I got to bounce back to yeah. this meteorologist thing because okay. I have a very important question. Um, let's say you did become the weatherman on TV. What is your weatherman? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, since I haven't really, I don't have those ambitions, and that's something I don't know. But the weatherman have names? Yeah, it? like Stormy Weathers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, like porn star. Yeah, you got to you got to work on a weatherman <laughs> name. You know, ah, I'm not sure that's a weatherman name though. It's Wendy like, Johnson. Rockies. <laughs> Rocky Tsunami. <laughs> Victor McRichter. I don't know. Victor, uh, Victor, that's a good one. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. we're going to be coming back to this. Our, our mission today, in addition to picking your brain, is going to be getting you your your stage name. <laughs> cool. When you, Psycho, when you, at, when you said, stop, weatherman, I have a very important question. I thought you were going to say, I want to go boating this weekend. Is it going to yeah, rain? Yeah, well. That's a valid question, but uh, I work for Newgrounds and we'll never be able to afford a boat. So, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's reminisce a little there, Victor, um, about that fateful trip to Pico Day. Um, mm -hmm. One of the best parts of that trip for me was uh, Victor and I uh, shared a bed the entire weekend. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, this was around the time that uh, YouTube was popping up in popularity. Viral videos were getting huge, and a particular video of a turtle making sweet, sweet love to a shoe was going around. And uh, mm. every fucking morning, I would wake up to Victor making the turtle noise. Victor, do you want to give everybody a taste of the turtle noise I woke up to every fucking day? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I hate it. I hate that, it. That, that, that was my alarm every morning for the duration of that Pico Day trip. Uh, and then I don't remember who it was. It was either you or FBI Pollux. Somebody had brought a box of animal crackers into the room. We were sharing. So the, what we, here's the situation. We're in this Suite at the Embassy Suites in Philadelphia. Are you gonna bring up some fucking trauma now? Yeah, we're bring it. We're yeah, gonna bring up the trauma, but we gotta set. Yeah, I gotta, gotta set the people. stage. The environment. Yeah, we were all in this one suite, so there's like maybe two beds, a pull-out couch, and a bunch of floor space. So we had like fucking eight, nine people crammed into this one suite, and somebody had brought in this box of animal crackers, and Victor pulled out the horse, and I guess he fell in love with the horse, so we named him Horsey. So we had this little fucking animal cracker mascot for days. And uh, okay, we're out on the balcony one day with our little mascot. And Horsey fell off the balcony on the 44th floor of the embassy suites. Oh, my God. Yeah. No. It, it was a tragedy. Horsey, no! Horsey. <laughs> so it's 
kind of an inside story, I'm so but it's, it had to be shared. As far as I remember it, it was FBI Pollux who threw that fucking horse. Is that what it was? That's the way I remember it. Fucking murder. All right, so I want everybody everybody listening to this gets to get into the uh, PMs and let FBI Pollux know he's a dirty fucking murderer. Horse killer. He still taunts me to this day about horses. Yeah. Once in a while on Facebook or whatever, it's like, horsey. (laughs) (laughs) Some wounds will never heal. I'm surprised that ended in it falling off a balcony and not somebody chomping its head off. That's where I thought that was No, no. Much more dramatic than that. (laughs) Don't give him any ideas now if he's hearing this. (laughs) No, I know. Don't wake up with a bunch of dead cracker horses. (laughs) Wake up with horse heads in your freaking pillow with little graham cracker crumbs. (laughs) In your bed like the godfather. but but animal crackers, obviously. (laughs) Of course, yeah. (laughs) But real blood. I don't know why. Real blood. And then later later in that same visit, um, I believe it was Hans Van Harken's idea. Uh, We all ended up working on this collaboration animation. Um, there's a movie called Contact on Newgrounds, if you guys want to look it up. We'll probably post the link to it. But anyway, everybody that was at that Pico Day and somehow managed to stay awake after like midnight or something like that. It was really late when we started doing it, as I recall. We basically all got kind of corralled into doing this. I want to say uh, Hans wrote most of the script. Stamper kind of helped a little bit with some dialogue. Next thing you know... Pretty much everybody's got a voice part. So we're all like rotating through the freaking recording studio at Newgrounds. And we decided we wanted to have a title song for this, which did not make it into the cartoon because uh, somebody who will remain nameless did not get Hans the audio file on time. But yeah. that audio file <laughs> does exist. I'm not even going to tell you what it's called. I'm going to make you go to Rocklow's audio page and listen to every song in his like 113 song list until you find it. But uh, yeah, we basically went down into the bottom of Newgrounds and chanted to kind of get like a sci-fi movie intro vibe. And yeah, you got to check it out. It's it's kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, th- that's actually the keyword chant. Yeah. No, think. don't give it away. Mm-hmm. They'll never they'll never know yeah. which song it was. But uh, no. actually, Will <laughs> Will and I talked briefly about surprise. making it the title song for this episode, so they might end up hearing it after this gets edited. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Here it is. title for this uh, podcast episode but, or either the remix that's a really like good banger or the just original file by itself which is it's funny um if you actually listen to it on his audio page and you don't go to the the listen page just stay on that audio page they will play one into the other and it's fucking seamless it's amazing <laughs> we could just know. sing it yeah i don't remember how it goes it's uh, let's try oh <laughs> I actually remember a ghost. I don't know about this. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> there it is. Live and in person. You know, I like <laughs> I like the idea that you guys are partying and you've you've all flown to the same place and it's this giant kind of everybody's together to having fun. 
midnight passes, and you guys are probably drunk, and you're like, you know what I want to do? Let's go make an animation. Right? And go record voices and open up Flash and do some freaking work and right that's now. That's so new grounds, but... That is so new grounds. Yeah, yeah. We, the animation actually didn't happen during that. Basically, we made sure we got as much audio and stuff for Hans as we could, and I think Hans did pretty much all the work. He might have got a little help from some yeah. other guys, but... Yeah, for the most part, it was, mm-hmm. and it's such a stupid movie, and, and probably, probably, <laughs> probably is. not uh, something that you'd be seeing on Newgrounds today necessarily. But, no, but no. yeah, alcohol it's was absolutely one hundred percent involved. You can just say it was a product of its time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little taste. Brock, I'm always curious about this with everybody who has a kind of prolific Newgrounds career and then does something prolific in the real life. Do you, or did you ever feel like your Newgrounds career and your real life career were the same or had any like overlaps or is it just two different people doing two different things? Uh, I mean, I was doing a lot of, well, quite a lot of music and sound stuff and some contests and uh, all sorts of things on Newgrounds. So mm-hmm. that does definitely tie into what I did at DICE. Uh, you know, not 100%, but there are definitely elements, yes. Did anybody at DICE ever see the Newgrounds page? Did they talk about what you'd done, the music you made, or is it just the past? Nah, not really. Uh, I mean, I think I showed one of the guys, Andreas, he's a sound designer doing uh, guns and stuff, and he he's a metalhead as well, so I think I pulled up some of my really, really early like metal i'm doing citation marks here metal songs and uh okay. yeah that, that's probably about it i think he kind of like the guy that does the guns yeah that's mr guns. mr, mr. Guns. guns did you help mr guns with his guns uh yeah sometimes with not, not like any major things but we would go and shoot together to record uh, weapons and stuff so I was part of a shoot for a pretty big shoot for Battlefield One. We went out to record, um, like, what's it called? Uh, noise type, uh, noise sounds basically for different. Were you guys shooting the actual authentic period guns for that, or just stuff that was close enough? No, no, that's the real. Oh, that's dude. cool. Uh, yeah. So, so cool. The, there's this, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one with the, with the like the cylinder drum on top of it. Uh, that kind of spins around when you when you're shooting. That one, that was the cool, coolest one. Too. Is it like a noise canceling, like noise suppression kind of thing for stealth? No, 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 n- not on the end. It's basically where the the bullet clip is. Like it's kind of like a Tommy gun, but the cylinders on top. Yeah, it's a yeah. Machine gun. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. I would. One, of the, one of the best so guns in the game, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we recorded that and a bunch of other weapons uh, in a couple of different environments. And uh, that was really, really cool. Uh, so we would set up mics on different distances and naturally select different mics and different preamps depending on what they wanted to have uh, to work with and so forth. So that, that was really cool. Uh, and we got to shoot a couple of guns ourselves. One of my colleagues, he <laughs> he had glasses on. So he would pull up a rifle and he, he was, I don't think he was using his uh, shoulder properly for the... To call the, the that, yeah. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I was like, so there was a guy, you know, dealing with everything. And I looked at him, and I'm like, yeah, maybe he doesn't say anything. So yeah, probably it's probably fine. But of course, it wasn't. So his glasses fell off, and I think they got cracked and whatnot. But he he, he didn't lose his eye or anything. So that was <laughs> <good>. <laughs> the glasses saved him. Yeah, fast and loose with those gun protocols. Yikes. I'm not going to mention which people that was, of course. They might yeah, don't name <laughs> names. One of the shoots. There were many shoots. the guy that had the bruise for a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I would also assume that you had something to do with some of the foley for the game, like the punching and the melee attack sounds, the stabbing of things. Yeah, you can say that. Um, so for some of the bullet impact sounds... Uh, we would punch each other in the stomach. Or it was, a, I guess, it was mainly me punching my boss in the stomach. <laughs> uh, uh, there are some videos on that, and that's probably should be online somewhere. I, I actually don't know where to find it though, but there should be some presentation because I know that they've been using 
uh, quite a lot of the material that we've been uh, recording, like video. That's good. So there, that should be. I think maybe I have it somewhere as well. On some video, old... you punching your boss and recording it for sound. Yes, yeah. and That's if wonderful. if ten is maximum of what I could punch, then I would probably hit him with a nine or something. <laughs> it was, it, it's kind of cool. Cause, so he he's he's a martial artist, and I think he's actually won like the uh, championship for like kung fu, some kind of show off Jeez. type style, whatever. I, I'm not sure, but we would have this. Uh, we had a kind of a big uh, uh, like sports initiative, which was called Die Sports. And uh, I was the, I guess you call it like president or whatever for that little group of people who would find fun activities to deal with. And uh, like you would run a marathon or you would run like Tough Mudder or similar similar to that. So yeah. we got a, we just got a bunch of money and we would do those, those things. And um, one thing was uh, this thing that they called Fight Club. The first rule, this one was that you were supposed to talk about because they of course wanted to have a lot of people there. So we would do quite a bit of martial art and look, like, I don't know, between like 10, 20 people or so that would go regularly every week or so. Just like sparring, like like gloves on the little helmet on? Yeah, some, uh, not that far, I think. Um, oh, so you just beat each other up? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> we okay. would take turns. So everyone uh, would have more or less different b- backgrounds. I have a background in Shurinji Kempo, uh, Thai boxing and all sorts of various things but i would do like a shorinji kempo focused session someone else would do like a thai boxing session wow. capoeira and whatnot it was all over the place really so it's yeah we fun. got some good company sports going on if you want to join the softball team we got a volleyball team we got a street fighting team <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know just kind of a good way to get some steam off after work punch someone in the face record it maybe uh, i don't know it is yeah. sweden i mean punch your boss in the face. <laughs> yeah then we go surfing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, I got. I just got to. I got to make a. I got to make a point real quick before we get into anything else. Um, Tom Falp, if you're listening, I know you're working on Nightmare Cops right now, and that game involves a lot of punching. Uh, if you want me to come out there and just fucking ream you with my fist for 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 the the Boy, cause, I, I I will totally do that. Just throwing that out there. All right, let's get back to the interview. <laughs> that's that's so nice Thank of you, you to say. You really that's a noble cause. <laughs> I guess the point was that my boss could actually handle it. Can Tom handle it? That's true, yeah. That, and that's a dare. <laughs> you sparred before. You're not just like bringing your like glasses nerdy boss in there and being like, hold still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that video too. I was like, oh my God, this is great. Every video game should be recorded this way. For, for the record, when they were shooting the guns, they weren't shooting his boss. Let's, let's make sure we put that in. <laughs> well, we don't know that. Yeah, you don't know that. I'm not gonna say. I mean, I'm still under NDA, of course, so I can't really. Oh, I, I can't tell you we didn't shoot our boss. <laughs> I can't tell you we didn't shoot our boss. We shot our boss. <laughs> we just haven't seen him lately. That's all. <laughs> um, Victor, when you're playing games like AAA games, if you do, do you like find sometimes you hear past it and you're like hearing how the sounds are made, or are you able to separate and enjoy it? Uh, both, actually. Yeah. Uh, That's good. I mean. I think that that's really important. I think when I was eighteen, I was quite a lot into making little shitty movies and stuff. And it, it went to a point where I, I couldn't watch a movie or MTV or anything MTV, which, which was actually you know playing music okay. videos back then, uh, without just dissecting everything. And uh, it, it was that was not good. But with yeah. games, probably because of growing up and I don't know. Yes, I, I can actually and. Uh, I will still notice mainly, uh, well, everything sound related, mainly voices. First, but it, I can I can still just kind of squelch squ- 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 those thoughts and that's good. keep going. So I actually did sound design in college too. That's actually part of why I was excited to talk to you today. But I remember that being a big thing for us. And especially, you know, in college when you're new and you're learning everything newly, you're like, I can't listen to music, man, because I'm picturing the recording session. Or I can't <laughs> play a game because I'm like, I'm picturing what it, what the work it took to put it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you realize that at a certain point you do actually have to not do that anymore and be able to enjoy things. So you're not just a robot. Yeah. I mean, that's such an important thing as well about it because at the end of the day, your part, even though it's, I mean, I was one of very few people working with the voices, so we would have more or less ownership on that. 
that stuff. You still have to be able to take a step back, try to see it, you know, uh, through different lenses and just kind of figure out, is this good or not? Does this fit the bill of what the game's supposed to be uh, and uh, and such? Or, or is, otherwise, it's easy to get lost in your own little, well, this doesn't sound good because of how I perceive things or how I'm taught to do things or whatever. And you're going to have to go against that quite a lot. And it's like, ah, oh, sounds horrible, but it's going to fit the bill. Yeah. Sometimes that happens, I guess. <laughs> We're getting some... Uh... We're getting some chat in our online or live chat, and Grim Jimmy is saying, "Damn, how's like the Beatles recordings are all panned so weird." I agree with that; they are panned mm-hmm. very weird. You listen to a Beatles recording, and like the like, drums are on the left ear only, and the guitar is on the right ear only. I would guess that's fair. I'm not. I can't remember exactly when stereo was the new deal, but it might have something to do with that being a new thing, and uh, they would experiment with stereo like crazy days before yeah. they figure out oh, well this actually sounds okay and of course it's also the fact that when stereo first came out a lot of systems well most systems will still be mono so how that folds down and all yeah. that stuff and it's uh, yeah yeah stereo sound was basically something that only rich people could enjoy on their big hi-fi speakers yeah. and everything producers and stuff probably looked at it differently too like now you look at stereo as like how can i get the most immersive effect or back then it might have been more in the tune of how can we make it sound like you're sitting there watching them live. So, yeah, you know, if Ring goes off to the left, you're going to hear the drums on the left. You know? <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel like you're sitting in the recording room with them. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the peak of my music. Yeah. Well, we... <laughs> that's, 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 that's very relevant, though. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, today, you have to cater for a whole range of different end user systems, basically. Uh, you got headphones, and all of a sudden, the, the stereo effect's going to be a shitload more apparent to you. Uh, whilst if you're in yeah. a car and there's a lot of different noise, well, you have to cater for that as well. Is it going to be broadcast on radio, uh, TV, someone who doesn't have a proper sound system, just some built-in shitty speakers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and that's something that even Newgrounds musicians listening now are going to, like, relate to because i remember like when i was making a lot of music for newgrounds i would go and like put i would burn it on the cd and put it in my car and listen to yeah. it in my car and be like oh that sounds like shit everything i did on the computer sounds bad here <laughs> you need a better Literally. car that's man super important. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> super important to do when you're doing when you're making music or uh, sound effects or whatever uh, you need to have some kind of reference system to your uh, main system so basically you would learn your own system you, you learn your room that you're sitting in uh, because you get used to it. But that also means that all rooms have a standing have standing waves in different frequencies, uh, which means that some frequencies are going to be a little bit louder, some are going to be a little bit lower. And the only way to figure yeah. that shit out is to use different reference systems. So you'll, you'll throw on your cans, you'll li- listen to it in another room, in the car like you did, uh, etc. So that's super important. You can, of course, after a while, you yes. will learn to... Uh, what your room and your system's weakness and strengths are. So you will know that, yeah, I can kind of hear a little bit too much of this bass uh, here, but I know that it's in the range of a certain frequency where the the room is resonating quite a bit, so it's not going to be a problem. And, of course, you can use visual tools as well as a support. You should never rely on visual tools. Yeah. Do you ever do that? If you want to look like a true sound nerd, is you standing in the center of your room with a pink noise generator on your phone going, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's like it's the same thing as a, like listening on Beats headphones and listening on studio headphones. Studio headphones are designed to be super flat and yeah. boring and equal, and the Beats are designed to be like bassy and, and crispy and yeah. fun yeah. and expensive. <laughs> exactly. I remember my, this uh, internship – this recording studio guy I worked for one time would have like three sets of speakers lined up next to each other and they were all connected to the computer so he could actually like audition different speakers and what sound would uh, sound like on different speakers right That's there. That's how you do it. That's not how I do it. I just, whatever it sounds like on my laptop speakers is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. Well, there you go. It sounds ridiculous. But... If it sounds good to me, it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> it's like, I mean, for uh, quite a lot of the voices that I would record for the multiplayer, you would not believe the noise in those recordings. When you play the game, it's like you, wouldn't, you, you don't hear the noise and all the crap that's in those recordings. 
we would do auto recordings for about three and about four for the multiplayer. And uh, so we, we rounded up a bunch of people in the middle of Stockholm uh, and recorded that shit. There's planes, there's fucking horses, there's birds, there's crickets, <laughs> there's everything in those recordings. It's actually really, really, really shitty <laughs> when you listen to them one by one. And it just works. Uh, it works super well. <laughs> Because uh, what do you do about that? I didn't do anything really. I mean, I would cut out. I would cut out a little bit of bass just to get the uh, low, very low end away from uh, from the city, basically. And you would do that anyway for most recordings. So we do that, and I would level it properly so everything. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of files here. So go through that shit, and you just make sure the level is not necessarily equal in the sense that they are level equally but they are when you listen back to them they sound like they're kind of the same level which means that the when you look at the decibel meter they might differ like crazy but it's what you perceive that's important so i would i would go for that and then i would do slap a little bit of know, some 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 basic eq uh just so that i could get something to fit the game a little bit better Super soft though, didn't do much. And then uh, maybe uh, I'm not even sure. I would have a limiter, of course, but no compression, no nothing like that. It's just that. But that's also because it, it's a whole shame when you record something, right? And if you get it right in recording, then you don't really have to do much with it. If you know what it, what its place is going to be in the whole soundscape, then you can kind of plan for that. You can try out things. And figure out well this mic works on this distance blah 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 and then you can just go uh, use that stuff and you won't have to do a lot of uh, post. Such a cool field. <laughs> so in the uh, the field of video game audio design, uh, we've got on Newgrounds obviously a lot of people who are into music and uh, really over the years we've got a big voiceover community that's growing out of that. Do you have any advice for up and comers, uh, what they should focus on, etc., trying to get into the video game industry? Hmm, good question. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I worked on it for a long time. <laughs> uh, I guess there, there are so many different types of games, really. But when it comes to sitting in the booth and, and recording stuff, you really need, I think you, as an actor, you need to be able to I mean, and I'm saying everything here from a different perspective because I'm absolutely, absolutely not an actor, I'm a really shitty actor, but I think you would need to be able to just have really good imagination. This goes for all actors, of course, but you would probably end up having either you're lucky enough to do some mocap and stuff as well, then all, everything is just going to be you know, dots on a suit and the camera on your helmet set in your face or something like that. They even use that still. Maybe they don't. Uh, maybe a microphone slapped on your helmet or something like that. So you need to use your imagination quite a lot. And I think that's one of the most important things is to be able to, with very little information, try to understand what is actually going on in this situation. So, I mean, it really ties down to being a good actor. Uh, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's when, when it boils down, that's, that's it. You can pretty much... Pretty much whittle this advice down to the uh, SpongeBob meme where he's going, Imagination! Imagination! That's, that, that's all you need to know, kids. Pretty much. Well, I guess one more thing is that you could always, if you want to work on something, work on speed uh, when you're delivering things. Because you might end up with having to do, I don't know, we had a guy uh, uh, who's going to do English lines for the multiplayer in Battlefield 4 with a Russian accent. And this guy, I've never recorded anyone who's been as fast as he was. So he would look at the script, read the lines. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think he probably delivered the lines before he even read them. <laughs> and he did it really well. So, of course, that comes down to what kind of directions do you have. And, of course, it comes down to what type of actor you are, you, you are if you're good at that or not. So when you're saying speed, you're talking about the amount of time it takes to be ready and to be able to deliver something yeah. good. You're not talking about like, like literally the speaking speed. Or no, something. no, 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 no. That's, that's, I mean, that's part of the <laughs> yeah. You have to learn to be fast. You have to learn to really talk fast. That's you got to read your parts part like you're an auctioneer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a sound like an auctioneer. We're going to be uh, 350, 350. Can we do 400? We're going to do 400, 450, 450. Too slow, Will. Too slow. You're never going to make it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I was um, talking to uh, Zin Zinix. He um, he's hosting probably the worst podcast on Newgrounds, uh, Grounds Breaking. Nobody likes it. It's awful. Totally, oh, totally, oh. totally second tier to us. But uh, totally second tier to us, the good one. I was talking place. to him. He uh, he he hired a whole bunch of people to do voice acting for skits on this podcast, and he was kind of joking around how uh, one of our mutual friends, well, he, he'll remain nameless, but his, his name rhymes with Jacob. And um, anyways, he's he's such a perfectionist that he wanted to keep doing multiple takes until he got it right. And Zen's like, you know, his first take was like really fucking good. Like so, I could see that kind of tying into what you're saying about speed. Is like you know, trust your instincts and maybe not overdo it (laughs) yeah i guess it's a it kind of comes down to what type of uh, voices you're recording so are you recording some very delicate narrative passage then you might end up with 10 20 even more uh, retakes for that stuff maybe you'll even have to redo the whole that whole that same line uh on a pickup session because it just didn't work or whatever if it's super important like that then that's a different kind of a different skill set than when it comes to being able to pop out short battle type lines. Look out, grenade! Hey, right. Grenade! Watch out, grenade! Okay, next yeah. next category, and that's gonna be around the lines <laughs> of I'm taking fire, shit, friendly fire. I don't know, yeah. whatever. It, it's uh, medic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, and those don't have Simple to be that good. Stuff. Those don't have to be that good. I mean, when you look at back at games, I mean, it's it's fairly recent that you actually had real actors even doing that. It used to be just the fucking programmers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, People just get their friends to do it. It's fairly recent. That's just you being old, I think. Because, <laughs> yeah, well, come on. It's like for 20, year, 20 years at least, for most students. Yeah, but for the first first half of the games industry, it was the freaking programmers yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. doing their thing. It makes me think of the original Deus Ex, where the guy just delivered everything with this monotone. No matter what it was, grenade. I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> and there's that one famous like meme from the game where somebody goes, "Oh my God, there's a bomb on the helicopter!" And he goes, "Bomb, <laughs> <laughs> bomb, <laughs> a Deus Ex bomb." <laughs> all right, I gotta ask saying, on that note. What out of, out of all those old games? What what do you guys think the game with the worst sound design was? Uh, Ooh. You know, I'm I'm not gonna answer that question. I'm just not. It's, it's, it's mean. <laughs> That's I'm why I asked it. I'm an asshole. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. To... I'm gonna go with Pico's school. <laughs> yeah, sound design wasn't really a priority for that one. I could tell. Yeah, that sounds, Tom. If, if Tom is listening, then yeah, he's gonna have to take that here. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't think yeah, of that. Yeah. That was really, really bad. No. <laughs> just gonna rehash my uh, offer to uh, provide some punch sound effects. <laughs> The, the new game there. <laughs> what games have you played recently that you think have really good sound design? I haven't played many games, or I, I should say many new games recently. Uh, I'm kind of stuck playing Talisman Online. That's kind of what I play. <laughs> but one game that sticks out, and it's not recent, but one of the one of the best sound designs of a game, I would say, is uh, Last of Us. Not all of it, oh, yeah. but... Uh, Definitely, when it comes to the uh, to the voices and the immersion you, you as a player experience when you play the game, then definitely. Yeah, yeah that game's definitely an experience. Yes. That's kind of what you're going for. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there's a game on the Switch called Lonely Mountains Downhill that I'm playing right now. It's just like a straight up, you're on a bike, you're going down a mountain and try not to crash. But the sound design is really good of it. It's, and it's all ambient like forest backgrounds and it's really lush it's really good. it's like i think it's kind of meant to be a meditative experience where you really feel the outdoors around you as you're biking down the hill and stuff and you get the air and the forest and the crickets and the river the creek bubbling and there's some good sound design for a game that's very simple mm, i love i'm a big fan oh go ahead uh i just love when there's uh when games actually put that much emphasis on sound and when it comes down to it, it's a uh, games industry is naturally in, in many ways different to the film industry, but there's an old, like, I don't know, saying or, or whatever, uh, within the film industry that sound is half the movie and, or something yeah. along those lines. And it's definitely in some games for some games, it's probably more uh, than 50% that is the experience and the, you know, the, the immersion basically. 
I would argue that immersion in certain types of games is more important than the actual gameplay. Most often, you would say mm-hmm. gameplay is king, but immersion is like, I mean, what you describe now when you're, you're just describing what you remember from the soundscape, that paints a picture, <laughs> yeah. and that, that's something that, I mean, that's your experience from something that's, that you hold here, in a sense, and that's the sound. If you want to portray yeah. feelings, and if you want to like plant feelings or, or how you, you would put that into the player, then sound is the most important thing, basically, I would say. Uh, for, and I'm, I'm generalizing here, of course, depends on no, but yeah. it, 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 I remember it, we were taught that too. Sound is the, like, it's the key to the emotional core of a person. It's sound. Well said. Modern day games, especially, like, I'm a big fan of, like, what you're talking about, a lot of old school games, they would rely on music to set tone. But now the, the environment itself has a sound. Yeah. And not only that, like, you know, your, your TV screen, yes, the graphics are 3D, but it's it's essentially flat. You know, you're only seeing a square, unless you're playing on VR, obviously, but that's a whole other right. animal. But with sound, yeah. you know, like we were talking about before with stereo, we got Dolby, surround sound, all that now. Like, the sound is 3D. You are immersed in the sound, and your brain can register that. So it really helps suspend any disbelief just by that audio immersion that the video just can't quite do yet. It's always going to be all around you. There's even yeah. ways to, you can program a sound to like simulate what it sounds like to come from the back of your head or behind your head. HRPS. That's fascinating. Head related. Yeah, it always blows oh. my mind when you hear that type of thing and you know you're just wearing headphones. There's only two speakers, but I hear shit behind me. That's cool. Behind you. It's because they're able to like band pass, filter out the specific frequencies that your skull would, would block or something like that. Something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, basically you would take a, like a dummy skull, dummy head, and you put two microphones mm-hmm. Uh, and this skull has ears as well, because the, ear, the shape of the ear is uh, very important for how uh, the sound gets filtered into the ear, uh, into the ear channel. Yeah. And uh, you would put microphones where the sound goes in, in the opening, basically. So these microphones will then record everything that this head would filter, if you will. So if you have a sound coming from the front of you, it's going to bounce on your forehead. Uh, some of it will... It come directly to your ears and into the mics, but the the stuff that doesn't will kind of like uh, go around uh, just like waves do for for those who knows physics, uh, how that works with waves um, propag- uh, how waves propagate and how they can change direction and science. So so it'll, it'll go in and it'll go in with slightly different timing. Uh, some sounds some frequencies will be uh, filtered. Some frequencies will, frequencies will go straight through the head and hit the mic. Uh, that would be like lower frequencies. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you can you know, play back what that person or that dummy head would hear. And if you have headphones or, uh, or if you're sitting at the perfect distance between two speakers, so you have the same distance for the left and the right speaker to your uh, respective ears, then you will be able to, to get this uh, three-dimensional effect. That's basically on a plane, so you got your X and your Y axis. It's really hard to portray how a sound coming from above or below, because, and that's a physical constraint that our ears <laughs> and our brain is. Yeah. You can kind of, but it's not going to be super clear. Yeah. That's why a lot of the bigger sound, like the sound systems for theaters, Adobe Atmos has like 36 speakers yeah. above your head. Yeah. Make it sound like a helicopter is coming, like from one side of the sky to the other side. But that's what it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Atlas. And for what it's worth, I don't know if anybody movie theaters. Ah, uh, I don't miss movie theaters. Movie theaters are old fashioned. <laughs> oh, but the audio is so much better, man. <laughs> the audio is good. I don't know if anybody finds this boring or overly scientific, but I'm like wrapped. I love that kind of talk. <laughs> like, yes, please, tell me more. more. Skulls with ears on, ears on skulls, skulls with ears. No, that's cool sounding technology, honestly. This might be something helpful for people. So we've established like sound is half the movie. And if you're making an animation, sound can be half the uh, half the animation as far as immersing people in quality. So people who are making newer things who are newer to it might be younger. Uh, what can you recommend to them for how to make their sound better with maybe a limited knowledge of sound design? Find good sources online for sound effects. That'll go a long way. Just having uh, having a lot of good sound effects. That even if it's like something that everyone uses, doesn't matter if it's open source or uh, what's it called, um, 
Creative Commons license, uh, open, whatever. Yeah, CC0, yeah. whatever. Go for it. Use it and play around with it because it's gonna. You, you're gonna. You, you're probably gonna notice how that opens up a new channel of creativity as well. Even if you're not interested in sound in the first place, it's gonna, probably gonna be. That's actually kind of how I got into sound because I was just starting to make. I, I made my little shitty movies uh, when I was I don't know 17, 18, and Adobe Premiere was fairly new uh, and available for uh, private users for a low cost. <laughs> and <Yes>. uh, <laughs> digital uh, editing, basically. And uh, I mean, I was just fooling around with that. And uh, at some point, I was like, ah, I need sound for this to sound good. Uh, of course, uh, and, and to, to be perceived as a, as a nice um, product. And I kind of wanted to have, you know, I wanted to make it my own as well. So I started to make music for it mainly because music is one of the things that will e more easily portray or uh, give the the viewer uh, a taste of what you want to play. Uh, so music, music, yeah, is, like the, music is maybe perhaps one of the first things to experiment with. What actually works for my animation? Then sound effects, I would argue, is secondary. Dabble with it, use it definitely. But music might be is probably going to have a somewhat larger impact. And when I say music, it doesn't have to be, of course, a musical score like a band or something like that. It could just be some more ambient, ambient type of music. Uh, and we're already there starting to kind of slide into the world of sound effects, really, and sound design. Yeah. Sense. yeah. So, I mean, just Back throw up. things around, uh, find free sources online that you can uh, at least work with easily is throw into your. Uh, I don't know what people use to animate nowadays, but there's probably some audio, audio tracks <laughs> there, and just you know learn to use one, two, three, four, or five different channels. Play it back. Just poke around a little bit with the levels. If you have good content, yeah. that's really all that's needed anyway. <laughs> so don't underestimate backgrounds. Those are yeah. good. They're gonna appreciate that. I think uh, we have a little bit of time, and I want to talk about the live chat we got going on. I'll read about, I'll read out some of the things people are saying, but guys, if you're listening to this, uh, you have the chance to ask uh, experienced sound designer anything you want. So pipe up, give us a question if you want. We might read it out loud. Grim Jimmy and Hot Stuff DX and Mr. Snuggles are over here talking about, the, we, we mentioned Pico School and they're saying, what do you mean? The teacher talking is like an audio orgasm. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fell for the peer pressure of Josh, so I don't know. Should ask him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no! The Sims, good sound design. The Sims, like, The Sims also is one of the last bastions of like easy listening music and like soft jazz. Well, what do you call like soft rock? The, the Sims, you know, the background music in The Sims. The, the Sims voices are quite interesting because that's the whole fucking not language, but just listening to what they say. Uh, well, obviously not what they say because you would have to read it because you don't know they understand what they're saying. But how they say it, right. that's really good. Because that kind of also you know, tells you how you can understand what a person means to say or uh, what, what it wants without being able to understand words. Just being able to portray, like, rrr, 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 rrr. am I angry or am I oh happy God. now? You just by you know, uh, throwing out your emotions through <laughs> your voice, basically. That's... You're so right. Nintendo's really good at that yeah. too. Like they still do a lot of games where you have to read, but you you get the idea. Just like, huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, hey. You're right with the, hey. the Sims. That's got my mind. <laughs> like, how do you emote when you're not saying anything? Like, you're okay. You you, you got a line on the script, and it's like hooba jub jub hippelhorp, and you're supposed to say that sad. <laughs> okay. Hooba jub jub hippelhorp hippelhorp. <laughs> now you have to do it angry. Now you have to be frustrated. Well, that's when you get into your kind of like uh, actor's uh, skills and you, you find a sad moment in your life and you're like, you can help me. Meisner, method acting. Think about a very traumatic part of your childhood. Think about the worst thing. The worst thing that you need therapy for, it's really what bothers you. You stay up at night. And then think about that while you say, he believe <laughs> Words are secondary, and that's something that we would use quite a lot, actually, for uh, for the shouts and the screams for uh, the multiplayer part of, uh, of the Battlefield games. It doesn't matter if you scream, yeah. 
Look out, grenade! Or it's just, rah, 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 rah. I mean, you're gonna understand that shit's hitting the fan. And that will make yes. you as a player, you know, maybe look around a little bit and extra and see what's going on. And you'll, you'll have a warning or some kind of heads up. And that goes for real life as well. I mean, if you're uh, uh, downtown and someone starts screaming something in an angry tone, then of course you're gonna, you know, you'll, you'll notice that and you'll, your uh, sensor will get kind of, yeah. what's going on? Or your, um, uh, nerves that will get heightened or whatever it's called. It's not what they're saying. It's how they yeah. say. It. You hear, uh, you hear an emotion. You hear the anger of something behind you, and you're like, "Oh, something's yeah. happening. Uh, we're angry now. Help! Guns! Pew yeah. pew! Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> pew pew. Indeed. Psycho, is there anything else you wanted to uh, to ask? We're coming up on the time, but um, just real quick, we uh, expect some new music out of your ass on Newgrounds soon. Oh shit! Out of your ass, literally. Oh, I think I can manage that. Just give me a couple of pizzas and I'll be ready. Nice. <laughs> if you need a backup singer for any chanting, you know who to call. Yep, yep. Oh, we didn't get his uh, meteorologist name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anybody um, got a meteorologist name? I don't think anybody came up with anything. No. Uh, Rainstorm Mick. <laughs> yeah, that's already Tornado. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's going to be Irish no matter what. Something Mick something. Uh, Stephen Cumulus. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Cumulus. Yes, do it. <laughs> Victor, is there anything you want to plug? Any work you want us to be looking at right now? Any of yours, or a Patreon or something? Maybe nothing that I'm dealing with. Um, okay. Anything else? I guess yeah. A friend of mine is working on the Hitman stuff, and there's Hitman Five. Is it three? No, three coming out. That could be cool. I don't know. Oh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, no, nothing. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, be, we sure, are be sure all... to check out that little indie game known as Hitman 3 and, and fund its Patreon. Yeah, check out a little gem, the little diamond in the rough, Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. But awesome talking to you, man. It's been way too long. Yeah, right? it has. Let's make sure it doesn't take that long next time. Yeah. Well, you got Discord now. You know how to <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool now. Richard, thank you so much for coming on. This is fun. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Long live New Grounds.